In today's Leeds news, fixture changes for TV, Farka on Gruev Impact, latest on Raksaki links, update on Photo Ballo Torre, and today's news wrap up. Hi folks, Jay here on Wednesday morning the 31st of July. Wednesday, we're getting into the back end of the week. We will have the podcast tomorrow night and we will have a match day preview with Andrew Stats Dalton on Friday as well as a match review of the game for the weekend when that's taking place as well. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. There's still a month or so to go in the transfer window by tomorrow it'll be exactly one month left in the window. We'll all want that to close as quickly as possible for Leeds and for their players. And there's a bit of updates on a couple of players with Leeds. Not really potential exits, but some detail on links with Leeds. And Daniel Farker talking about some of the existing squad as well. So we'll start off and we'll get into the fixture changes. And Sky are at it again. And this time they have made a raft of changes for the campaign between October and December. And they look like the following. Norwich City versus Leeds has been moved to Tuesday the 1st of October with a 7.45pm kickoff. That change has been due to another fixture clash. Sunderland versus Leeds has been moved to Friday the 4th of October with an 8pm kickoff for TV. Leeds versus Sheffield United at home has been moved to the 18th of October with an 8pm kickoff for TV. Bristol City versus Leeds away has a Saturday 26th 12.30pm kickoff. Millwall versus Leeds fixture date is now Wednesday the 6th of November with a 745 p.m. kickoff that's due to a fixture clash Swansea versus Leeds fixture moved to Sunday 24th of November with a 3 p.m. kickoff Leeds United versus Luton fixture changed to Wednesday 27th of November with a 7.45 p.m. kickoff for because of a fixture clash Leeds versus Derby County also moved to Saturday 7th of December with a 12.30 kickoff due to Sky Sports Leeds versus Middlesbrough as a fixture day change of Tuesday the 10th of December with an 8 p.m. kickoff on Sky Sports, Preston North End leads away. Fixture date is the 14th of December with a 12.30 kickoff. Stoke versus Leeds has a Thursday 26th 8pm kickoff. Derby versus Leeds has a Sunday 29th of December at 5.45pm kickoff. And Luton Town versus Leeds United has a fixture change to Saturday the 5th of April 2025 with a 12.30 kickoff. There's a lot there. There's also some changes made earlier on in the summer as well but there should be some uh, notes on this as well especially for the ones that are on TV there's 13 games moved there you can probably take two of them out for fixture clashes that makes that what 11 games that'll be televised plus the initial three between August and September that brings that up to 14 and Sky have said Leeds will have a limit of 24 games well, every club will have a limit of 24 games on TV next season that means that there can only be 10 games televised by Leeds on the second half of the season if Sky are to stick to their word and we will um, we believe that when we see it but for right now we we'll move on to the next topic and that's around Ilya Groove and the impact he's had so far in pre-season and Daniel Farke has been talking very positively about Ilya Groove and the impact that he is having and what he could have for Leeds next season Farke believes that Ilya Groove could be an incredibly important player for Leeds next term after building on a good season last year and a successful pre-season so far. Over pre-season we've seen Gruev in a more advanced role than his normal holding midfield role and he even managed to get himself on the score sheet against Hanover. Speaking after the pre-season tour Daniel Farka had the following to say about Gruev. I have a good feeling he'll be a very important player this season. You can see he's a good player. Sometimes of course you need other things like a little bit of luck to be in the right spot at the right time. But if he keeps doing what he's doing, he has a very good chance to help us a lot this season. Gruev, as I said, has been primarily a holding number six for Legion United last season. And for me, a player I, I really like in that role. And you could be ex- expected to see with a midfield last season that only scored one goal, albeit from Gruev himself. You could be excused for thinking that Leeds would start the season with Joe Rothwell and Ethan Ampadu side by side. But that night might not be the case now after a really impressive pre-season from Gruev. And Gruev himself has also spoken on this, the topic and he has said the following. I played a little bit more advanced than last year in these games together with Ethan. When we play together I have a little bit more freedom to go more up and also sometimes to get in the box. This is nice because you don't know as an opponent what we are doing if I'm dropping or if I'm moving higher. It's more flexible. I like this. I like it too. I'm a big fan of this. I do like it as well. It is more flexible but also it means leads are less predictable and that's the most important thing. Last season Leeds suffered from a, a case of being overly predictable at certain points during the campaign. So having more options in that midfield, having more options with the existing players that are there will definitely help Leeds into next season. Uh, moving on to a bit of player rumour that's been floating around. We're going to talk about the latest on the Raksaki situation. He's a name 
that has been mentioned continuously with Leeds United over the summer, but not just with Leeds United, also with Southampton, where he was expected to have moved to Southampton at this point already, if you were to believe news and rumour that floats around online. But he hasn't gone, and according to Alan Nixon, Jesserum Raksaki has been left out of Crystal Palace's tour in order to get a move away from the club, and is now training alone. Leeds are said to be one of 18 championship clubs that are interested in making a loan move for the Crystal Palace winger, and Crystal Palace themselves favour a move to the championship rather than a sale of the player. Southampton have a £12 million valuation of Raksaki, and are still expected to try with another bid towards Crystal Palace and force their hand and see if they can get a permanent move for the player sorted. Leeds would be favoured in terms of a loan based on the fact that Leeds are expected to compete in the promotion spots this season and that would give Raksaki an, an elevation on what he did last season as well. They themselves see him as an important player in their future and Crystal Palace are very much in favour of a loan move for the player outside of a permanent move. So unless Southampton can manage to entice Crystal Palace to sell the player on a permanent deal of £12 million or over, he could end up moving out on loan next season. And Leeds being one of the bigger clubs in the Championship, it might be a move that favours uh, Leeds. However, it is said the player himself would favour a permanent exit and Southampton are the only permanent exit on the table right now for him. Moving on to an update on a player we spoke about yesterday, and that's Fodo Balau Torre. And yesterday we heard that there were some links between Leeds United and a potential move for the player, and the player was linked with Leeds and another unnamed championship club that's now been named as Watford. There's now been an update on the player, albeit a slight update on the player's situation. A report from Pianeta Milan says that AC Milan had agreed a fee with Beziktas in the Turkish Super League for the player, but the player himself rejected it. The player himself has now been left out of Milan's squad and is training alone until they can find an exit for the player. Milan themselves are keen on offers for the player as they try to get him off the books for next season. The player finds himself in a position similar to Glenn Kamara last year when Leeds had an interest in him and he was training alone at Rangers until the move could get sorted out. There may have been some contact between the clubs already. There was a report yesterday that said Leeds had a £2.5 million bid rejected. Whether Leeds go back in for him or not remains to be seen. He's a decent player, nothing spectacular, but a decent fullback. Will be seen as a relatively good backup option for Leeds for junior football next season. And with Leeds and Watford, the, the, the two likely clubs on in the market for the player, Leeds would seem like a more obvious choice, but he may get more game minutes at Watford and might decide to do that instead. Leeds will be linked with every fullback under the moon between now and the start of the season or until Leeds United bring in cover. The fact that Daniel Farker has said out loud that Leeds want a central midfielder and a fullback means that agents, media, players will all be trying to link Leeds with them now at this stage. But it is a name that's been linked repeatedly with Leeds. We'll have to wait and see. He's had a similar similar situation to Junior Firpo since he joined Milan. He's really struggled for time there. Went to Fulham on loan. Didn't have a great time there either. And is now back in Milan looking for a move to try and kickstart his career again. But at the mid to late 20s of years of age, he needs to be finding somewhere to to make his home at this point. Uh, The rumour mill stuff that's floating around. We'll just briefly touch on the Gabriel Sarri story, if we can call it a story anymore. Uh, Basically, there's a report out that says that Leeds tried to buy Sarah a couple of weeks ago and offered five to six million pounds to Norwich for the player, which was knocked back at that stage. There is another report that claims that that Turkish club were also interested in the player as well, and the report claims that they should just go and pay the seventeen million asking price and close off this deal and get it done. Another report says that that Turkish club did bid seventeen million pounds for the player to Norwich and had it rejected by Norwich so if the player is over 17 million pounds if they're not negotiating anything less than that this is a very difficult deal for any club in the championship to get done unless Leeds as we said before have so sell some of it or Nanto for a large amount of money and then use that money most of it to reinvest in replacements for them but we'll have to wait and see what happens with that but very much a, um, a dead story at the moment and we'll, we'll see what happens over the next coming weeks and months that's going to be it for today folks massive thanks as always for watching and subscribing to the channel I'll be back tomorrow morning for more Leeds news have a great day talk to you soon see ya bye